What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and you may have seen our last Talking Head video where we talked about the new 20 series family from NVIDIA. I talked about some of the specs, and really it's just sort of a recap of the keynote without a lot of opinion in there because it takes time for us to absorb that information. Obviously the public has absorbed that information and there is a lot of opinion floating around and a lot of it negative. So I kind of want to address some of that, give you guys some food for thought and give you my two cents now that I've had some time to kind of absorb and process the information that is out there. MSI brings ultra-thin gaming to life with their new GS65 Stealth. The 4.9 millimeter bezel, 144 Hz, 1080p panel, Nvidia graphics and 8th gen Intel CPUs make the new GS65 Stealth a true powerhouse with a small footprint. Find out more and how to pre-order by following the link in the description below. So after the keynote is over, typically what happens at these events is they drop black curtains everywhere and then there are gaming stations set up. There's real time, you know, VR and racing simulators and all the games that were kind of showcased at Gamescom that are gonna be utilizing ray tracing and stuff with the new cards are on display for the people in attendance at the keynote to get hands on with. And inevitably you probably saw a Reddit post and or a Twitter post and whatever it got, this got really reposted and got a lot of traction about a gentleman who played Shadow of the Tomb Raider with ray tracing on and was only getting 30 FPS in 1080p. And that caused a lot of stir in the gaming community Unfortunately, there's a lot of ignorance in the gaming community and people who truly don't understand. They just, the only language they speak is FPS and they don't understand what's actually happening with this. So we wanna straighten some of that out. I wanna talk about pricing and I wanna talk about the mentality of pre-ordering and why you should never pre-order, in my opinion, anything, not just graphics cards or games or cars, just Pre-ordering is always a bad idea. The company should earn your money, and let's talk about that. Now the 20 series cards, specifically those cards that are gonna be using Touring, the 50 and the 60 are gonna be GeForce, not Touring, um, they are designed and built around ray tracing. That's no surprise we've talked about that. Ray tracing is the newest, well, it's really not new, but it's the newest available thing on consumer grade cards that's able to actually handle ray tracing in real time. That's why the keynote was like 95% ray tracing Let's face it, it was 100% ray tracing. And Jen Sun was really, really getting off on that because it's something they've been working on for 10 years. Obviously he's hugely emotionally and financially invested into that core and that's why that keynote talked about that. But the thing that really was missing from the keynote, which, is, which was very odd because every NVIDIA event I've ever attended where a new card is introduced, they showed generation on generation improvement in terms of FPS. Even then, I take those slides with a grain of salt. You always should with NVIDIA, AMD, Intel. You should always take the independent reviewers and kind of mash up a bunch of those and form your own opinion. But that was missing entirely. There was not a single graph showing FPS. All they showed was ray tracing performance generation on generation, which is why I showed in the, and mentioned in the last video, take it with a grain of salt. It's marketing BS. You can't take a card like the Pascal Core, which is just rasterization and compare it with real-time ray tracing, of course a card built for it is going to destroy it. It's like taking a card that's not built for double precision and pairing against a card that's built for double precision and saying, look how much better this card is. Of course it was built for it. So that's exactly what happened here. But because there were no FPS benchmarks, people lost their minds. Maybe that could mean there's not as big of a gap as you'd be expecting. Of course, it's not a 5X gap like they're showing on Pascal. It's probably more like a 0.25% or 0.25%, no, 25% improvement, which is kind of what we've seen year on year. Linus has done this video, I've done this video in terms of where we take five or six generations of cards, compare them with the latest games and latest drivers, and we see 20 to 25% year on year improvement. And I think that's probably what we're gonna more expect to see. Rasterization is literally how every game has been rendered until today, because now we're doing it with ray tracing. Rasterization and ray tracing are not directly comparable, which is why when you saw this article going around of a gentleman that was very upset that he was only getting 1080p 30 FPS with ray tracing turned on or RTX on, and that caught a lot of traction. A lot of gamers were like, oh my God, this car is super, car is super slow. Why are we only getting 30 FPS? Well, you're getting 30 FPS with that mode enabled, which is hugely impressive if you even remotely understood what has to take place for real-time ray tracing to happen. Now that doesn't mean rasterization gaming performance is gonna suck. It means it's probably gonna be through the roof. The thing is you're just seeing two completely different approaches in how it was uh, handled. The problem is too, you're seeing a card that is not out yet with drivers that are not fully matured yet on a game that is not fully built yet. So 
I think this is just this was just fuel for a lot of people to get super upset and salty. I saw a lot of people even say, I'm canceling my pre-order. I don't I don't believe you. And let me tell you why. If you were the kind of guy that's gonna run out on day one and do the pre-order on the same information that we all had, now suddenly you're just like, this this card sucks. I don't think either one you never pre-ordered to begin with, or two, I don't think you really canceled your pre-order, but that's besides the point. You can't directly compare the two. But that leads again to the speculation that a, 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 almost at AMD, that NVIDIA, this felt kind of like an AMD press conference to be honest. The fact that NVIDIA never showed any gaming performance figures at all with the standard DX12 and rasterization and all that stuff, that led a lot of skepticism, which meant a lot of room for people to speculate, which is what you're seeing now. You are seeing speculation passed off as fact when nobody has the details. No reviewers have their cards yet. No reviewers have been hands-on with the exception of what they experienced at the after party after the keynote. And we all have to play the waiting game now because you're not gonna see any reviews until like probably right before launch or at launch. That's my, that's my best guess. Now let's talk about pricing because that was the other reason people got super mad. Why is this a the 80? I'm gonna say 1080 Ti at least once in this video, guys. It's, I've been saying it for the last two and a half years. Why is a 2080 Ti $1,000? Oh my God, why is it $1,200 on NVIDIA's site? Why'd they raise the price 300 bucks or whatever it is? There's something I think a lot of people, it's just, it's in your face, it's staring at you and nobody is seeing and realizing and I wanna explain this. Do you guys remember back when the Terry Crews build was just about done and then they launched the second Pascal Titan, the Titan XP, but it was the little P when we dubbed the other one the big P because it was Pascal and not to be confused with the X and the Max. Do you guys remember all that crap? That was the second Titan of Pascal. The, t the 1080 Ti launched right after the standard Titan X launched. And then after the 1080 Ti launched, the Titan X with the little P launched. All three of those were the same core. All three of those were the exact same architecture. The Titans had uh, one extra gigabyte of RAM and the Titan XP had more CUDA cores than the Titan X big P and the 1080 Ti. It was an extremely confusing situation that we all complained about. And this is where NVIDIA actually did the right thing in my opinion. They took the Titan name with Titan Volta, stripped the GeForce off of it entirely, made a completely new drop down a family of graphics cards on the website for drivers called the Titan family, and now it is segregated entirely, which is what it should have been. Remember the Terry Crews build, they initially didn't want to send me Titan cards, they wanted me to use the 1080 Ti because they said the Titan card is not built for gaming, which was complete bullshit because it was the exact same core and family and architecture and everything as a 1080 Ti card. So now to get rid of that confusion, they have stripped the, the Titan name entirely. The other thing NVIDIA was always known to do is launch these standard 80 and 70 series cards where later, a few months down the road, the Titan card would launch and then immediately after that, sometimes one month, as soon as one month after, you'd get the 80 Ti series card, which was a kick in the face to the Titan owners because it was always the same core as the Titan, but for much cheaper. And the Titan was always $1,000 or more. The first Titan launched at $1,000 and then the Titan X on Pascal was $1,200 and that's the price it stayed all the way up through the Jedi and Sith versions of the cards. It was always the case. The Ti never launched at launch. But now we are actually seeing the 80 series TI launch on day one, which shows you the full stack from the top down, and it's gonna work its way down to the, seri the 60 series card, the 50 series card, which will be GeForce cards, not touring by the way. This is a good thing. All they did was take the Titan card and rename it 80 TI, which is why it's available on day one. It's $1,200 for the Founders Edition card, MSRP of $999. It's another good thing because the Titan card was always an in-house brand kept close to the chest. You couldn't make custom PCBs, you couldn't make custom coolers, et cetera, for it. Now you can because now the AIBs actually have, uh, they have the plans and the reference and they can make custom cards. So now you're gonna, technically the 80 Ti is a custom Titan. The 80 series cards with the non-Ti is a $699 MSRP. That's technically $50 less than the 1080 Ti launched at, at 749. The 70 series card is $499, so 500 bucks, which is essentially the same price the 1080 had launched at. I guarantee you the 2070 is gonna be faster than the standard 1080. It might even be faster than the, than the Titan or the 1080 Ti, but again, we don't know because all of the marketing and stuff was based on ray tracing and not rasterization and standard gaming performance. That's why there's so much speculation. But everyone's mad about the pricing when all that happened was a name shuffle. That's all that happened. So the 80 Ti is really a Titan. The 80 is still the 80 and the 70 is still the 70. And you're getting those for the, roughly the same launch price they always were within 50 bucks. 
but now you get all the ray tracing technology put on top of the gaming performance that's going to be at least 20 to 25 percent faster than the previous family of graphics cards. Benchmarks will obviously have to stand by that and show that. I'm really hoping that it does, otherwise there's no incentive to buy the card. Which brings me to my last point today. If you have a Pascal series card, it's probably not in your best interest to go out and pre-order and or even buy the 20 series family unless you were just the kind of guy like me who wants the latest and greatest, you want the bragging rights, and you straight up get off on hardware, then that's probably the card in the series for you. You have to have the latest and greatest and you're okay with paying for that. You don't care what anyone else thinks. You shouldn't anyway, no matter who you are, you shouldn't care what anyone else thinks. Then it's right for you. But in terms of generation on generation gaming performance, it's going to be a 20% a, a at least improvement across the board with all the ray tracing stuff available in the future. What's not going to happen though is ray tracing is not going to get easier to render. So with you seeing the 1080p 30 FPS with ray tracing on, on the Shadow of Tomb Raider demo that was, that was shown, that's not going to get any better. This is first gen for this guys. That's something that's going to improve over time as the hardware matures. So if you're buying this card specifically for the ray tracing, don't expect cutting edge performance in terms of FPS. Just the fact that you can even do it in real time is the amazing part. And that's obviously what Nvidia is hugely excited about. There was a massive investment in time and money on that. And I don't fault them for being excited about that. Because like I said, performance, which is still somewhat secretive, and pricing, in my opinion, is still in line with what you would have always expected from a new family of graphics cards. Anyway, guys, prove me wrong. If you've got a different opinion, put it down in the description. Description, no. You don't have access to the description. I do. Put it in the comments down below. Tweet it at me. Put it on Reddit. I don't care. This is a discussion that's worth having. I don't think anyone should be pre-ordering these cards. I never pre-order anything. The company should earn your money first. Don't give them your money before they've earned it. I've always felt that way about anything that includes a pre-order, especially games. And that's something I'm always gonna stand by. But obviously you can see our reviews here. Once the embargoes lift, you will be seeing the 20 series family reviews here on this channel. And we can't talk about any of it until we have something to talk about and we're allowed to talk about it. So guys, sound off in the comments below if you've got a difference, difference of opinion or if you think there's something I missed in all of this. Thanks for watching guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.